I want to talk specifically about the benefits of speaking in tongues. And this is something that is so criticized today, and uh, there is so much rejection against it that I just feel like I may need to spend some extra time on it in order to be able to counter all the religious traditions and doctrines of men. And so um, let me just turn over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's interesting to me because in chapter 12, uh, Paul starts by saying in verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know, there's very few things that he introduced by saying, I don't want you to be ignorant about this. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit is one of the things that Paul mentioned that he didn't want us to be ignorant about, and yet this is one of the areas that there is more ignorance about the gifts of the Holy Spirit than probably many, many doctrines in the body of Christ. And even among those who have experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they operate in these gifts, there's still a lot of ignorance, and there's a lot of things that are done incorrectly that don't conform to the instructions given right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14. So there is a lot of misinformation about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And yet, man, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are powerful. You know, I am not a perfect example on anything that I can think of, but I don't operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit perfectly, and yet the little bit that I have tapped in to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and have seen God work through me, I tell you, it has just transformed my life and my ministry. We would, we would not be seeing any of the things happen that are happening through us today if it wasn't for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Man, that is a huge statement, but it is absolutely true. And you know what? There are so many people today, so many people who have been introduced to the Lord and have prayed a prayer and they made Jesus their Lord so they wouldn't go to hell. But then until they die and go to heaven, they basically are living this life down here on earth under their own steam, under their own power, they aren't drawing on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and because of it, that's the reason their life is in just constant turmoil, and there's just uh, tragedy after tragedy. I've had people come up to me in my prayer lines before, and they tell me what's going on in their life, and I've literally stopped people before and said, how did you get into this kind of a mess? I said, this isn't normal. Nobody could have all of these problems if it wasn't supernatural. And yet there are people that honestly are just not drawing on God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They're living life on their own and they are making an absolute wreck out of their life. Now, God loves you and I love you and we're here to help you, but I'm saying that the reason that you have so many problems is because we aren't letting the Holy Spirit flow through us. And this needs to change. It says in, in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, he says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his own steps. Now, God has given you the choice. He won't force his will upon you. But according to that scripture in Jeremiah 10, 23, you were never intended to run your own life. You were intended, you were created in the image of God and you were meant to be in communion with God and receiving direction and leadership through God. And the way he does that is through the Holy Spirit. And the reason that people's lives are so far out of whack is because they haven't been listening to God. They've been doing their own thing. I tell you what, that is a recipe for disaster. So these gifts of the Holy Spirit are for us today. And if we would draw on this, I tell you, it would make a huge difference. So let me go on and read. It says in verse 2, he says, You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Now, Paul is speaking specifically to the Corinthians, and the Corinthians were very corrupt. They had uh, all kinds of idol worship. They even had one form of worship where there were a thousand priestesses who, when you went to the temple, their job was to have sex with you, and that's the way that they worshiped Aphrodite and some of these demonic gods. So these people were coming out of pagan religions, and uh, he says, you know, you've been deceived before, and you've been led astray. 
SO I WANT TO GIVE YOU SOME INSTRUCTIONS THAT WILL HELP YOU TO UNDERSTAND THE WAY THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT MINISTERS. IN VERSE 3, HE SAYS, WHEREFORE I GIVE YOU TO UNDERSTAND THAT NO MAN SPEAKING BY THE SPIRIT OF GOD CALLETH JESUS ACCURSED, AND THAT NO MAN CAN SAY THAT JESUS IS LORD BUT BY THE HOLY GHOST. NOW THERE ARE DIVERSITIES OF GIFTS BUT THE SAME SPIRIT, AND THERE ARE DIVERSITIES OF ADMINISTRATIONS BUT THE SAME LORD, AND THERE ARE DIVERSITIES OF, OR EXCUSE ME, I WAS USING THE WRONG TERM THERE IN VERSE 5, THERE ARE DIFFERENCES OF ADMINISTRATIONS BUT THE SAME LORD, AND THERE ARE DIVERSITIES OF OPERATIONS BUT IT IS THE SAME GOD WHICH WORKETH ALL IN ALL. THIS IS JUST SAYING THAT THERE ARE DIFFERENT WAYS OF USING THE GIFTS. EACH PERSON IS GOING TO PUT, THEIR PERSONALITY IS GOING TO BE USED, AND SO THERE WILL BE DIFFERENT WAYS OF DOING IT, BUT IT'LL BE THE SAME HOLY SPIRIT FLOWING THROUGH THEM. YOU KNOW, I'VE GOT SOME OF MY VERY GOOD FRIENDS, SOME OF THE PEOPLE THAT I BRING TO MY CONFERENCES AND THAT I HAVE SPEAK WITH ME ALL OF THE TIME. THEY'RE DIFFERENT THAN ME, BUT IT'S THE SAME HOLY SPIRIT. THE LORD FLOWS THROUGH THEM AND FLOWS THROUGH ME DIFFERENTLY, BUT, but IT'S THE SAME HOLY SPIRIT. A LACK OF UNDERSTANDING THIS HAS CAUSED SOME PEOPLE TO JUST REJECT OTHER PEOPLE AND CRITICIZE THEM BECAUSE THEY DON'T DO THINGS EXACTLY THE WAY IT WORKS WITH THEM. BUT EACH ONE OF US ARE GOING TO HAVE DIFFERENT WAYS OF FLOWING IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, BUT IT'LL STILL BE THE SAME HOLY SPIRIT FLOWING THROUGH US. A LACK OF UNDERSTANDING THIS HAS CAUSED A LOT OF DIVISION AND CRITICISM IN THE BODY OF CHRIST. AND THEN IT SAYS IN VERSE 7, BUT THE MANIFESTATION OF THE SPIRIT IS GIVEN TO EVERY MAN TO PROFIT WITH ALL. MAN, I COULD SPEND A LOT OF TIME ON THIS VERSE, BUT I'M JUST GOING TO SAY THIS QUICKLY AND MOVE ON. BUT EVERY SINGLE PERSON WHO'S BORN AGAIN, ONCE YOU GET BORN AGAIN, THE HOLY SPIRIT GIVES EVERY ONE OF US SPIRITUAL GIFTS. EVERY ONE OF YOU. AND AGAIN, THIS IS ANOTHER THING THAT HE SAYS, I'D HAVE YOU NOT TO BE IGNORANT. THIS IS SOMETHING THAT THE BODY OF CHRIST HAS BASICALLY BEEN IGNORANT ABOUT. WE SEE SOME PEOPLE WHO HAVE THESE SPIRITUAL GIFTS, LIKE THE GIFTS OF HEALING, THE GIFT OF MIRACLES, uh, SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND we, WE LOOK AT CERTAIN PEOPLE AND WE PUT THEM IN A CATEGORY OF CLERGY, AND THESE PEOPLE ARE ANOINTED BY GOD, AND GOD FLOWS THROUGH THEM, BUT THE AVERAGE JOE BLOW OR JANE DOE CHRISTIAN JUST DOESN'T HAVE ANY SUPERNATURAL POWER WORKING IN THEM. THAT IS NOT WHAT THIS IS SAYING. THIS IS SAYING THAT THE MANIFESTATION OF THE SPIRIT IS GIVEN TO EVERY MAN. IT'S TALKING ABOUT MANKIND, MAN OR WOMAN. EVERY PERSON IN THE BODY OF CHRIST HAS BEEN GIVEN SPIRITUAL GIFTS. BOY, THAT'S A HUGE STATEMENT. AND AGAIN, I, IF I WAS TO JUST GUESS, I WOULD GUESS THAT OVER 50% OF THE BODY OF CHRIST DOES NOT WELL, I COULD, I COULD SAY FOR SURE DOES NOT KNOW WHAT THEIR SPIRITUAL GIFT IS, AND THE MAJORITY OF THOSE DON'T EVEN REALIZE THAT THEY HAVE ANY SPIRITUAL GIFTS. NOT ONLY DO THEY NOT KNOW WHAT THEY ARE, BUT THEY DON'T EVEN BELIEVE THAT THEY HAVE SPIRITUAL GIFTS. THIS SAYS THAT EVERY PERSON HAS BEEN GIVEN A GIFT OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. THERE IS SOMETHING THAT GOD WANTS TO FLOW THROUGH YOU IN A SUPERNATURAL FASHION THAT GOES BEYOND YOUR OWN ABILITY. I OFTEN SAY IT THIS WAY, IF YOUR LIFE ISN'T SUPERNATURAL, THEN IT'S SUPERFICIAL. WHEN WE GET BORN AGAIN, GOD NEVER INTENDED FOR US TO LIVE JUST A NORMAL LIFE. IT SHOULD BE SUPER NORMAL, SUPERNATURAL. WE SHOULD HAVE GOD FLOWING THROUGH US, AND ONE OF THE WAYS HE DOES THAT IS THROUGH GIFTINGS. NOW, THERE'S NINE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT LISTED RIGHT HERE, BUT OVER IN EPHESIANS, uh, chapter, uh, CHAPTER 5, IT TALKS ABOUT uh, OTHER GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, SUCH AS AN APOSTLE, PROPHET, EVANGELIST, PASTOR, AND TEACHER. OVER IN ROMANS CHAPTER 12, IT LIFTS OTHER GIFTS, SUCH AS ADMINISTRATION, A PERSON WHO GIVES, A PERSON WHO IS MERCIFUL, AND THINGS LIKE THIS, AN EXHORTER. DID YOU KNOW THAT THAT IS A MINISTRY GIFT? THERE'S ALL KINDS OF THINGS. THIS ISN'T A FULL LIST RIGHT HERE, BUT THIS STATEMENT IS REALLY IMPORTANT THAT YOU RECOGNIZE THAT THERE IS SOMETHING THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU THROUGH THE HOLY SPIRIT LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT IS SUPERNATURAL. AND, and A LACK OF UNDERSTANDING THIS CAUSES ALL KINDS OF PROBLEMS. YOU KNOW, I'VE GOT SOME PEOPLE I KNOW THAT THEY HAVE A GIFT OF EXHORTATION. NOW, MOST PEOPLE DON'T EVEN KNOW WHAT THAT IS, BUT THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT I MEAN THEY ARE JUST AN ENCOURAGER. 
YOU GET AROUND THEM AND THEY JUST BUILD YOU UP. IF YOU WOULD STOP AND THINK ABOUT IT, I BELIEVE THAT EVERY ONE OF YOU CAN PROBABLY IDENTIFY SOMEBODY THAT THEY JUST ALWAYS SEEM TO BE UP. THEY ALWAYS SEEM TO BE POSITIVE REGARDLESS OF WHAT'S HAPPENING, AND THEY HAVE AN ABILITY TO ENCOURAGE YOU. THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE IS TALKING ABOUT, THIS GIFT OF EXHORTATION THAT'S LISTED OVER IN ROMANS CHAPTER 12. AND DID YOU KNOW IN THE CHURCH, OF COURSE, A PASTOR IS THE LEADER OVER A LOCAL ASSEMBLY OF BELIEVERS, BUT SAD TO SAY, THE BODY OF CHRIST LOOKS TO HIM TO DO EVERYTHING. AND THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT GOD SET IT UP. I'VE PASTORED THREE LITTLE CHURCHES. I NEVER HAD A MEGA CHURCH LIKE SO MANY PEOPLE TODAY HAVE. SO, uh, BUT, YOU KNOW, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT I HAVE A TEACHING GIFT IS THE, IS ONE OF THE MAIN GIFTS THAT GOD HAS GIVEN ME. BUT uh, THERE'S OTHER PEOPLE IN THE BODY THAT YOU HAVE TO USE THEIR GIFTS. SO JUST IMAGINE THIS, THAT A PERSON HAS SOMEBODY DIE OR THERE'S SOME TRAGEDY IN THEIR LIFE OR THERE'S, uh, YOU KNOW, SOME KIND OF PROBLEM THAT THEY'RE FACING. MOST PEOPLE JUST EXPECT THE PASTOR TO BE THE ONE TO GO OVER AND TO MINISTER AND TO ENCOURAGE ALL OF THESE PEOPLE. AND YET THERE, IT SAYS SPECIFICALLY THAT THERE ARE PEOPLE THAT HAVE A GIFT OF EXHORTATION. AND WE NEED TO DRAW ON THAT. JUST BECAUSE YOU'RE THE PASTOR DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU'RE THE ONE WHO'S THE EXHORTER IN THE BODY. YOU KNOW, ON OUR STAFF, WE HAVE SOME PEOPLE THAT I HAVE IDENTIFIED THAT THIS IS JUST ONE OF THEIR GIFTINGS. I COULD CALL PEOPLE BY NAME RIGHT NOW. I'M NOT GOING TO DO THAT, BUT I'VE GOT A LADY THAT WORKS FOR ME THAT uh, SHE'S LOST TWO HUSBANDS WHO DIED, AND SHE'S NOW MARRIED ON HER THIRD MARRIAGE, AND SHE'S BEEN THROUGH A LOT OF TRAGEDY, AND YET THIS WOMAN IS JUST CONSTANTLY PRAISING GOD. SHE'S AN ENCOURAGER, AND THERE HAVE BEEN NUMEROUS TIMES THAT uh, I CAN THINK OF TWO OR THREE WHERE PEOPLE HAVE LOST THEIR MATES AND THEY JUST NEEDED SOME ENCOURAGEMENT. WELL, IT'S ONE THING FOR ME TO GO OVER AND TRY AND ENCOURAGE THEM, BUT THIS WOMAN HAS BEEN THROUGH EXACTLY WHAT THEY'VE BEEN THROUGH, AND SHE IS NOT ONLY STILL SURVIVING, SHE'S THRIVING, AND BECAUSE OF IT, SHE IS AN ENCOURAGER. AND SO THERE WAS A WOMAN ONE TIME THAT LOST HER HUSBAND OVER IN AN IRAQ WAR, AND SHE HAD A CHILD THAT THE HUSBAND HAD NEVER SEEN, AND IT WAS A TRAGIC SITUATION. GOD LED ME TO GIVE THE WOMAN A CAR AND TO HELP HER, BUT YOU KNOW, RATHER THAN ME GO OVER AND GIVE HER THE CAR, WHICH I'M SURE WOULD HAVE BLESSED HER TO A DEGREE, I SENT THIS WOMAN OVER WHO HAS THAT MINISTRY GIFT OF BEING AN exhor EXHORTER. AND SHE WENT OVER AND THERE WAS JUST A SUPERNATURAL CONNECTION. AND THIS CHILD, NOW EVERY TIME THAT CHILD HAS A BIRTHDAY, THEY CALL THIS WOMAN BECAUSE THEY LOOK AT HER LIKE A GRANDMOTHER AND SHE COMES OVER AND uh, th THERE IS A CONNECTION THERE. AND I HAVE SENT HER TO NUMEROUS PEOPLE AND SHE'S JUST ON CALL. THIS IS WHAT I USE HER FOR. SHE IS AN EXHORTER. AND RATHER THAN ME TRYING TO EXHORT EVERYBODY, WHICH I MIGHT BE ABLE TO DO IT TO A DEGREE, THAT IS NOT MY GIFTING. THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE GIFTED. To, THEY'RE JUST EXHORTERS. THEY'RE JUST ENCOURAGERS. THEY CAN BUILD PEOPLE UP. IT ALSO SAYS OVER IN ROMANS CHAPTER 12 THAT THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT HAVE A GIFT OF GIVING. NOW, YOU KNOW, I LOVE TO GIVE. AND I GIVE AWAY MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF DOLLARS. I, I GIVE A LOT. BUT DID YOU KNOW, I DON'T KNOW THAT I HAVE A GIFT OF GIVING. THERE WAS A MAN, DON CROW, WHO WAS IN MY WEDDING. HE'S BEEN A VERY GOOD FRIEND FOR, I DON'T KNOW, OVER 40 YEARS. HE HELPED ME START THE BIBLE COLLEGE. HE WAS MY ASSOCIATE PASTOR WHEN I WAS IN uh, CHILDRESS, TEXAS. AND THIS GUY JUST HAS A GIFT OF GIVING. GOD USED HIM SUPERNATURALLY TO SUSTAIN JAMIE AND ME THROUGH OUR POVERTY DAYS. AND IT WAS MIRACULOUS THE WAY THAT HE COULD HEAR FROM GOD AND, and GIVE, AND the, HIS GIFT WOULD COME AT EXACTLY THE RIGHT MOMENT. AND I JUST LEARNED TO RECOGNIZE THAT HE HAD A SUPERNATURAL GIFT OF GIVING. SO WHEN WE WERE PASTORING IN CHILDRESS, TEXAS, THERE WAS A WOMAN IN OUR uh, CHURCH WHO WAS A SINGLE MOTHER. SHE WAS RAISING A BOY, AND uh, SHE WAS BY HERSELF, AND uh, DON CAME TO ME ONE NIGHT, AND HE SAYS, WE'RE SUPPOSED TO GIVE THIS WOMAN, uh, IT WAS SOMETHING LIKE $83.52 OR SOMETHING. I'M NOT SURE I HAVE THAT EXACT NUMBER, BUT IT WAS LESS THAN $100. IT'S LIKE $83.52. AND I SAID, WELL, LET'S let, JUST GIVE HER $100. AND HE SAID, NO, THE LORD SAID WE'RE SUPPOSED TO GIVE HER $82 OR $83.52 OR WHATEVER IT WAS. AND BECAUSE I RECOGNIZED HE HAD A GIFT OF GIVING, 
I SAID, OKAY. AND SO WE GAVE HER EXACTLY THAT AMOUNT OF MONEY. DID YOU KNOW SHE CAME UP TO US AFTER THE SERVICE AND WAS CRYING AND SHE PULLED OUT OF HER PURSE A ELECTRIC BILL THAT WAS EXACTLY $83.52. AND SHE SAYS, THIS MEANS MORE TO ME THAN IF YOU'D HAVE GIVEN ME $100 BECAUSE I KNOW THAT THIS IS GOD THAT SPECIFICALLY MET MY NEED. HE HEARD MY PRAYER AND HE JUST MINISTERED TO HER. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, I SAW GOD USE DON, I MEAN HUNDREDS AND HUNDREDS OF TIMES. HE HAD A GIFT OF GIVING. SOMETIMES PEOPLE DON'T RECOGNIZE THAT THIS IS THE HOLY SPIRIT FLOWING THROUGH US, BUT THIS IS WHAT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT. EVERY ONE OF US HAS BEEN GIVEN A GIFT OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND EVERY ONE OF US CAN OPERATE IN THESE SUPERNATURAL GIFTINGS. AND NOT ONLY WILL IT ENRICH YOUR LIFE AND GIVE YOU THE JOY AND THE SATISFACTION OF KNOWING THAT THIS IS GOD FLOWING THROUGH ME. IT'LL BLESS YOU, BUT, OH, IT'LL BLESS OTHER PEOPLE. AND I TELL YOU, THE BODY OF CHRIST NEEDS TO WISE UP TO THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND THE WAY THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT CAN TAKE SOMETHING THAT IS NATURAL AND PUT HIS SUPER ON IT AND MAKE IT SUPERNATURAL. WE NEED THIS. EVERY ONE OF YOU NEED THIS. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS THAT THE REASON YOU AREN'T RECEIVING IS BECAUSE OTHER MEMBERS OF THE BODY OF CHRIST AREN'T RISING UP IN THE GIFTINGS THAT GOD HAS GIVEN THEM AND THEY AREN'T MINISTERING TO PEOPLE AND YOUR MIRACLE IS INSIDE SOMEBODY ELSE AND THEY'RE SUPPOSED TO BE DELIVERING IT TO YOU. AND ALSO THERE'S SOME OF YOU WATCHING THAT YOU HAVE GIFTINGS THAT YOU ARE SUPPOSED TO BE MINISTERING TO OTHER PEOPLE AND HELPING THEM AND USING THESE TALENTS THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU AND YOU AREN'T DOING IT. YOU'RE ALL CAUGHT UP IN YOUR OWN LITTLE PROBLEMS. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THERE'S A DEFICIT IN THE BODY OF CHRIST. WE NEED TO COME TO A REALIZATION THAT EACH ONE OF US HAS SOMETHING THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS GIVEN US, SOME GIFT THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS GIVEN US THAT TOGETHER WE ARE GOING TO MAKE A GREATER um, PACKAGE THAN ANY OF US COULD MAKE INDIVIDUALLY. WE'VE GOT TO LEARN TO COOPERATE TOGETHER. WE'VE GOT TO START FLOWING IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. YOU JUST NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT THERE IS A GIFTING ON YOUR LIFE. YOU KNOW, I HAD THIS EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD, MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, WHERE GOD RANG MY BELL, REVEALED HIMSELF TO ME, AND I TELL YOU, MY LIFE HAS NEVER BEEN THE SAME. AND I STARTED TRYING TO uh, WITNESS TO EVERY PERSON THAT I COULD, AND I JUST TRIED EVERYTHING TO FIND OUT WHAT IS IT, GOD, THAT YOU WANT ME TO DO. AND IT'S A LONG STORY. I HADN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO ALL OF THIS, BUT uh, I WAS IN A BAPTIST CHURCH, AND I WAS TOO RADICAL FOR MY BAPTIST PEOPLE. THEY WERE, THEY LOVED ME BECAUSE THEY KNEW I WAS PASSIONATE ABOUT THE LORD, BUT THEY WERE SCARED OF ME BECAUSE I WASN'T TEACHING STRAIGHT BAPTIST DOCTRINE. AND SO THEY WOULDN'T LET ME JUST HAVE A SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS AND TEACH THE SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS AS IT WAS BECAUSE THEY WERE AFRAID OF WHAT I'D TEACH. BUT THEY WERE DESPERATE BECAUSE THEY HAD, I DON'T KNOW, LIKE 20 OR 30 DIFFERENT SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASSES EVERY WEEK, AND EVERY WEEK SOMEBODY WOULD BE SICK OR NOT SHOW UP OR SOMETHING, SO THEY'D ALWAYS HAD A VACANCY, SO THEY WOULD LET ME FILL IN. THEY WOULDN'T GIVE ME MY REGULAR, A REGULAR SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS, BUT THEY WOULD USE ME AS A SUBSTITUTE WHEN SOMEBODY DIDN'T SHOW UP. AND SO WHAT THIS MEANT WAS THAT they, YOU HAD TO TEACH OUT OF THIS QUARTERLY. THEY HAD A LESSON, AND YOU HAD TO TEACH WHAT THIS QUARTERLY WAS ABOUT. AND THERE WAS NO WAY THAT I COULD READ ALL 20 OR 30 OF THE DIFFERENT CLASSES AND BE PREPARED FOR EVERY SINGLE SCENARIO. SO I WOULD JUST HAVE TO PRAY. AND THEN I, they'd, WHEN I GOT TO CHURCH ON SUNDAY, THERE WOULD ALWAYS BE SOMEBODY AND THEY'D SAY, HERE, GO IN AND FILL IN HERE. AND I'D OPEN UP TO THE QUARTERLY AND READ A SCRIPTURE THAT I HADN'T EVEN READ BEFORE. THIS IS BACK WHEN I JUST FIRST GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD. AND I DIDN'T KNOW VERY MUCH. And I MEAN, IT WAS SOME OBSCURE PASSAGE THAT I'D NEVER SEEN BEFORE. AND I'D JUST SAY, OH, GOD, HELP. AND I MEAN, THE WORD OF GOD WOULD JUST FLOW OUT OF ME, SUPERNATURALLY. AND I, AFTER IT WAS OVER, I MEAN, THE PEOPLE WOULD BE BLESSED. I WOULD BE BLESSED. AND I'D THINK, GOD, WHERE DID THIS COME FROM? HOW DID THIS HAPPEN? AND THIS HAPPENED SO MANY TIMES. AT ONE TIME, AS I WAS DRIVING TO CHURCH, AND I HAD TO TAKE THE DALLAS-FORT WORTH TURNPIKE, WHICH was, IS NOW uh, INTERSTATE 30. BUT AT THE TIME, IT WAS A TOLL ROAD. AND AS I GOT TO THE DALLAS SIDE AND I WAS GETTING READY TO PAY MY uh, TOLL, I REMEMBER I WAS PRAYING AND I SAID, LORD, I KNOW WHEN I GET THERE 
there's going to be some class that doesn't have a teacher. They're going to ask me to teach. They'll give me a quarter, and I'll have to preach on a verse that I've never even seen or heard before. But I said, I know it'll be good. I said, how does this happen? How it had happened dozens of times. And I said, how is it that I can minister from a passage of Scripture that I've never even thought of before? And it just flows out of me. What's happening? And right as I was getting ready to pay that toll, I never will forget the Lord spoke to me and He says, it's because I gave you a gift of teaching. And that's when I finally realized that I had a gift to teach God's Word, a supernatural ability that's beyond myself. And, you know, I've seen this manifest many times. One time I was in Mobile, Alabama, and I was with Dick Braswell ministering there at his church. And um, I, that's when I was running six miles a day, and I didn't realize that the heat and humidity down in Mobile was totally different than Colorado. And even though, um, you know, I was running six miles a day, I just was pushing it as much as I could do. And the heat and humidity got to me. I'd also been fasting for three days, and I just, it was just stupid what I did. But anyway, the point is, when I got up in front of the church on Sunday morning to minister, I tell you, the whole world was spinning. I had to literally grab hold of the pulpit and hold on to keep me from falling over. And I couldn't see past the front row. I had just physically exhausted myself. And when I opened up my mouth and started talking, it just flowed out of me. And I couldn't even think straight. And yet it, the Word of God was just flowing out of me. It was so good, I went and bought the tape so I could listen to my own message because I was amazed. And it was one of the best messages I ever taught. And when it was over, I was thinking, God, how does this work? And it's because He has given me a supernatural ability to teach the Word of God. Now, there's, I'm sure, some of you watching this that think, well, I don't think you do very well, and I'm not claiming that I do as, uh, you know, good as other people and stuff, but I certainly do better than I could do on my own. I was an introvert and couldn't even look at a person in the face before, and now I talk to millions of people, and I've got a supernatural anointing on my life to teach the Word of God. You know, I get opportunities to stand in front of crowds and talk on political things, and to do other things, to give exhortations about stuff. But if it's not in the Word of God, uh, it just doesn't flow out of me. When I'm having to speak in front of a crowd and do something that is not just straight teaching from the Word of God, I still struggle. But man, the Word of God, God has given me an ability. If I had time, I had an experience with the Lord in January of 1974 where God touched my mouth and put His words in my mouth and told me that because I speak this word, God's word in my mouth would be fire and the people would and it shall devour. So anyway, I'm saying all these things to say that I believe I have a supernatural anointing from God to do what I'm doing. And every one of us is what it says right here, to every man is given a manifestation of the Spirit to profit with all. Every one of you have something that you are anointed by God, and the key to the Christian life is finding out what that gift is and then staying in your lane. You know, if Satan can't stop you from serving God, and he will try and stop you and tell you it can't work, but then if you persist and you're going to go ahead and, and God is going to use you, if he can't stop you, then what he'll try and do is to get you off track and trying to do things that you aren't anointed to do. You know, our ministry has grown to a place where we have millions of dollars come in per month, and I now have a cash flow that I could go start orphanages, I could start rescuing kids out of uh, prostitution and sex trade, and I could do a lot of things. And I have people ask me to do that all of the time. But I know what God called me to do. Matter of fact, I'm in the process right now of helping set up something in our local area where we are going to go out and reach out to the women that are being trafficked, trafficked in uh, sex trade and stuff like that. But I'm supporting somebody else. That's not what God called me to do. I know my lane. Now, I will give towards orphanages, 
And I support, I don't know, uh, I know at least 40 kids that I support on a monthly basis for 15 years, and we support more kids in orphanages. And so, anyway, I do all kinds of other things, and I'll give towards that, but I stay in the lane that God has given me. And the reason I'm saying this is for you. You have some gifting from God that is unique to you. And if Satan can't stop you from seeking God, well, then what he'll try and do is to get you to where you feel responsible to deal with everything, and you start diverting your energies towards that. You dilute yourself every time you do that. If you want to destroy a man's vision, give him two. Paul said this one thing I do, and the key to really being successful is sticking with what God has called you to do. So all of that, I'm circling back to saying that every one of you, whether you realize it or not, you have a special anointing from God to minister and to do something. There are gifts of the Holy Spirit that you have that when you flow in that gifting, in that calling, there is a supernatural ability that will cause you to prosper beyond what you could do on your own. You know, if I was to take time, I'm not going to do it today, but if I was to take time and just show you all of the things that God is doing in our life, our ministry, through our Bible college and stuff, you would have to say that there is no way that one person could do that. It is the supernatural blessing of God. And it's because I have been for 54 years, I've been seeking God. I've been listening to Him. The Holy Spirit is leading me, and the Holy Spirit put His super upon my natural, and I tell you, we're seeing some supernatural things happen. Man, I could just continue on. I really want to focus on speaking in tongues because this is a gift that is criticized a lot. There are entire denominations that think that speaking in tongues is of the devil. And uh, it's one of these uh, gifts, one of these nine gifts of the Spirit that's listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And then in chapter 14, nearly the entire chapter is talking about prophecy and speaking in tongues and about restrictions and ways that it's supposed to be done. And so there's a lot of scriptures that uh, talk about speaking in tongues. Let me just read this one to you here at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It says in verse 39, it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. That's amazing. It says, Forbid not to speak in tongues. And yet there's entire denominations that will say that any gift of speaking in tongues today is of the devil. They will say that all of these gifts that are talked about here in the Bible, they were for the first century, but they don't apply to us today. And we, and so it, therefore anybody who speaks in tongues or prophesies or any of these other gifts claims to have these supernatural gifts that these are of the devil. You know, if speaking in tongues was of the devil, how come you never hear anybody speaking in tongues in bars, strip joints, and all of these kind of things, in crack houses? Speaking in tongues is not of the devil. And again, I go back to this verse. It says, forbid not to speak with tongues. And yet we have entire denominations. We have millions of people who claim to be Christians today who say that speaking in tongues is of the devil. That's wrong. Don't forbid speaking in tongues. There is a godly gift of speaking in tongues. You know, I remember when I was pastoring in Childress, Texas, that I was painting houses to help uh, bring in some finances. And I remember I was painting this one woman's house, and she was one of the leaders in the local Baptist church. And so during the two weeks that I was painting her house, she would uh, visit with me, and we talked about the Lord quite a bit. And finally, towards the end of that time, she says, you know, you're a nice young man. Why, why did you ever leave the Baptist church? And I said, well, I didn't voluntarily leave. They asked me to leave. She says, why would they ask you to leave? And I said, because I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she said, are you talking about speaking in tongues? And I said, well, that's just part of it. But I said, yes, I speak in tongues. And because of it, they asked me to leave the Baptist church. And she said, well, they'd have asked you to leave my Baptist church too. And I, I turned over and read her this verse. 
And it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. I read, I had a New Testament with me and I read this verse to her. And she looked at me just as serious as a heart attack. And she says, Look, there's lots of things in the Bible that we don't believe. <laughs> and when she said that, I know that her pastor, if he would have heard her say that, he would have cringed. But she got the message that they just ignore this. And there's people that just, well, I don't care what the Bible says. We don't believe in those things today. Man, most people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe, but you should. This is a command. Forbid not to speak with tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the most important gifts of the Holy Spirit that we can use today. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And I want to spend the rest of today and and at least tomorrow, just talking about some of them. But I promise you, if you don't have this gift of the Holy Spirit of speaking in tongues, you are missing out on one of the most important things that God could ever give you. It makes a huge, huge difference. Let me just use some verses here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and in verse 14, it says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, I could literally spend a week or two talking about when you get born again, it's your spirit that gets saved, not your body and not your soul, which your soul is your mental and emotional part of you. Your mental, emotional part, your soul and your body are not saved. They've been purchased and someday we're going to get a glorified body and we also will get our mind renewed so that we will know all things, even as also we're known. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So we've got promise that those things are going to happen, but that's when we go to be with the Lord. The only part of you right now that is completely changed, like 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. It didn't say old things are passing away. It says old things are passed away. It's gone. It's over. Now that's not true in your body. If your body was fat before it got saved, it'll still be fat after it gets saved unless you go on a diet. If you were dumb before you got saved, you'll still be dumb after you get saved unless you apply yourself and let the Holy Spirit quicken your memory. Your body and your soul aren't instantly changed, but at salvation, you became a brand new person in the Spirit. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says that you have the mind of Christ. That's not in your physical brain up here. Your spirit man knows all things. It says that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, that we have an unction. The word unction means a special endowment of power from the Holy Ghost, and we know all things. All things. Again, that's not talking about your brain. Some of you can't even find your glasses, and they're on top of your head. You can't find your keys. You, you forget all kinds of things. That's not talking about in your brain you know all things, but in your spirit you have the mind of Christ and you know all things. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 says, Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So in your spirit, man, you have renewed knowledge. You know all things. Again, I could just spend days trying to drive this point home because most people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. They read something like that and just dismiss it. But if it's true that we know all things, then how do we draw on this knowledge that's in our spirit? How do we get it out? Well, again, I go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 14, that when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit is praying, but the understanding is unfruitful. That shows you that your spirit is different from your understanding. Your understanding is in the physical, mental, emotional realm. Your spirit is in the spiritual realm. In the spirit realm, you have the mind of Christ, and when you pray in tongues, you are speaking out of your spirit, the part of you that has the mind of Christ. Man, that's awesome. Well, it's, but it says specifically that your understanding is unfruitful. So how do you get it to be fruitful? Look in the previous verse. In verse 13, it says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, I will grant you that this in, in the context. 
HE'S TALKING ABOUT HOW THESE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT OPERATE IN A CHURCH SERVICE. AND HE'S SAYING THAT THERE SHOULDN'T BE MORE THAN TWO OR, or MAXIMUM OF THREE PEOPLE SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND EVEN THEN IT MUST HAVE AN INTERPRETATION WITH IT BECAUSE EVERYTHING IN THE CHURCH HAS TO BE DONE TO BENEFIT EVERYBODY ELSE. AND SO HE SAYS, WHEN YOU PRAY IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE, OVER HERE IN THE FIRST PART OF THIS CHAPTER, IN VERSE 2, IT SAYS, HE THAT SPEAKETH IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE SPEAKETH NOT UNTO MAN, BUT UNTO GOD, FOR NO MAN UNDERSTANDETH HIM, HOWBEIT IN THE SPIRIT HE SPEAKETH MYSTERIES. AND IN VERSE 4, IT SAYS, HE THAT SPEAKETH IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE EDIFIES HIMSELF. WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, THIS WORD EDIFY MEANS TO PROMOTE SPIRITUAL GROWTH OR TO BUILD UP SPIRITUALLY. SO WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, YOU ARE EDIFYING YOURSELF, BUT IN A CHURCH SERVICE, IT'S NOT ABOUT YOURSELF. IT'S ABOUT ALL OF THE OTHER PEOPLE. SO IN A CHURCH SERVICE, IF A PERSON SPEAKS IN TONGUES, IT HAS TO BE WITH AN INTERPRETATION BECAUSE IT'S NOT ABOUT EDIFYING YOURSELF. YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE BLESSING THE ENTIRE BODY OF CHRIST. SO THERE WERE LIMITATIONS ON IT. BUT IT DOES SAY THAT uh, PAUL SAID THAT I SPEAK IN TONGUES MORE THAN YOU ALL. AND HE WAS TALKING ABOUT MORE THAN ALL OF THAT ENTIRE BODY OF BELIEVERS PUT TOGETHER. SO PAUL DIDN'T ONLY SPEAK IN TONGUES IN A CHURCH SERVICE. HE SPOKE IN TONGUES PRIVATELY WHEN HE WAS BY HIMSELF. AND SO IN THE SAME WAY THAT IN A CHURCH SERVICE, A TONGUE NEEDS TO BE INTERPRETED FOR PEOPLE TO BENEFIT FROM IT. WELL, WHEN YOU'RE PRAYING BY it YOURSELF, YOU CAN ALSO PRAY WHAT YOU'RE SAYING IN TONGUES. YOU CAN HAVE AN INTERPRETATION. AND REMEMBER THAT WHEN YOU'RE SPEAKING IN TONGUES, IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING, THE PART OF YOU THAT HAS THIS MIND OF CHRIST AND THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD. AND SO WHEN... IT'S LIKE IF YOU WERE SITTING NEXT TO A WELL AND IF YOU WERE THIRSTY, YOU NEED TO GET THAT WATER OUT OF THERE. YOU COULD LEAN AGAINST A WELL AND ACTUALLY DIE OF THIRST IF YOU DIDN'T HAVE SOME WAY OF DRAWING THAT WATER OUT OF THE WELL. WELL, YOU, AS A BORN-AGAIN BELIEVER, HAVE THIS SUPERNATURAL KNOWLEDGE AND WISDOM OF GOD ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, BUT it, YOU COULD DIE OF IGNORANCE AND NOT KNOW WHAT TO DO, AND YOU COULD JUST BE DESTROYED BY THE DEVIL BECAUSE YOU DON'T HAVE ANY OF THIS WISDOM, BUT IT'S IN HERE, BUT HOW DO YOU DRAW IT OUT? SPEAKING IN TONGUES. WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING, AND ALL YOU GOT TO DO IS PRAY AND ASK GOD FOR AN INTERPRETATION TO SHOW YOU WHAT IT IS THAT YOU'RE SAYING. DID YOU KNOW, MAN, I COULD JUST... I'VE GOT SO MANY EXAMPLES OF THIS. THERE'S NO WAY I COULD SHARE ALL OF IT WITH YOU. BUT JUST, just TWO DAYS AGO, I HAD SOMEBODY HERE, A MINISTER, AND HE BROUGHT A PARTNER WITH HIM THAT WAS A PARTNER OF HIS, BUT HE'S ALSO A PARTNER OF OURS, AND HE WANTED TO MEET ME. AND SO HE CAME, AND HE HAS A BUSINESS, AND HE SAYS HE BELIEVES HE HAS A GIFT OF GIVING AND HE WANTED ME TO PRAY OVER HIS BUSINESSES. AND DID YOU KNOW, BEFORE HE SAID ANYTHING, BEFORE I PRAYED OVER HIM, THE LORD JUST SPOKE TO ME AND GAVE ME A WORD OF KNOWLEDGE ABOUT HIM. AND uh, THE LORD USED SECOND KINGS CHAPTER 4 ABOUT THIS WIDOW WOMAN WHO ELISHA TOLD TO GATHER ALL OF THESE VESSELS AND TAKE THE LITTLE BIT OF OIL THAT SHE HAD AND POUR IT OUT. AND SHE JUST STARTED POURING, AND SHE POURED AND FILLED UP ALL OF THESE VESSELS. IT JUST SUPERNATURALLY MULTIPLIED, AND IT MEANT HER NEEDS SUPERNATURALLY. BUT IT SAYS THERE IN 2 KINGS CHAPTER 4 THAT WHEN SHE TOLD HER SON, BRING ME ANOTHER VESSEL, AND HE SAYS, THERE'S NOT ANY MORE VESSELS, IMMEDIATELY THE OIL STOPPED. AND THE LORD JUST GAVE ME A WORD OF KNOWLEDGE FOR THIS GUY THAT YOUR PROSPERITY IS GOING TO BE DEPENDENT UPON HOW MUCH ROOM YOU'VE MADE TO RECEIVE IT. IF YOU DON'T PREPARE AND PREPARE FOR INCREASE, IT WILL LIMIT WHAT GOD CAN DO IN YOUR LIFE. AND MAN, IT SPOKE TO THIS GUY, AND THEN I PRAYED FOR HIM, BUT IT WAS THE WORD OF GOD. YOU KNOW HOW THAT HAPPENS? PRAYING IN TONGUES. AND I DON'T ALWAYS PRAY IN TONGUES AND THEN JUST STOP AND PRAY IN ENGLISH AND GET AN INTERPRETATION. IT JUST SAYS HERE THAT WHEN YOU PRAY IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE, YOUR UNDERSTANDING IS UNFRUITFUL. BUT WHEN YOU'RE BY YOURSELF, WHEN YOU AREN'T IN AN ASSEMBLY, YOU DON'T HAVE TO STOP AND GIVE AN INTERPRETATION IN ENGLISH. You PRAY IN TONGUES AND THEN STOP AND GIVE AN INTERPRETATION IN ENGLISH. ALL YOU NEED IS FOR YOUR UNDERSTANDING TO BECOME FRUITFUL. AND SO WHAT I DO, I PRAY IN TONGUES, AND I MAY NOT GET ANYTHING RIGHT AT THAT MOMENT, BUT I BELIEVE THAT WHEN THE TIME COMES, LIKE WHEN I'M PRAYING FOR SOMEBODY, THAT GOD WILL JUST GIVE ME SUPERNATURAL WISDOM. IT MAY BE A DAY LATER. IT COULD BE A WEEK LATER. BUT I PRAY IN TONGUES A LOT AND BELIEVE THAT WHEN I NEED THE WISDOM, THAT GOD IS JUST GOING TO SPEAK THINGS TO ME. AND HE DOES THIS CONSTANTLY. 
DAY BY DAY, HE SHOWS ME THINGS, THAT THERE'S NO WAY THINGS COULD HAPPEN THAT ARE HAPPENING WITHOUT THE INSPIRATION AND THE DRAWING OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS A BIG PART OF IT. YOU KNOW, LET ME GIVE YOU SOME EXAMPLES OF THIS. AND AGAIN, I'VE GOT HUNDREDS, PROBABLY THOUSANDS OF EXAMPLES. BUT uh, WHEN WE... THE, the LORD SPOKE TO ME ON uh, JANUARY THE 31ST, 2002, THROUGH THE SCRIPTURES, and a, AND a LOT OF THIS WAS BECAUSE I'D BEEN SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND I KNEW THAT THERE WAS A CHANGE COMING, AND I DIDN'T KNOW WHAT WAS HAPPENING. SO I SPENT A LOT OF TIME PRAYING IN TONGUES, BELIEVING THAT MY SPIRIT HAD THE MIND OF CHRIST IN IT. I JUST NEEDED TO GET THIS WISDOM THAT WAS IN MY SPIRIT UP HERE INTO MY BRAIN. I NEEDED TO UNDERSTAND. I COULD SENSE THAT SOMETHING WAS CHANGING. SO I SPENT A LOT OF TIME PRAYING IN TONGUES, AND FINALLY, THE LORD SHOWED ME THAT WE NEEDED TO GET A NEW PLACE, THAT WE WERE GROWING, AND, MAN, THERE'S A LOT OF THINGS THAT HAPPENED. I'VE GOT A BOOK ENTITLED, uh, DON'T LIMIT GOD, THAT GOES INTO A LOT OF EXPLANATION ABOUT WHAT HAPPENED JANUARY 31ST, 2002 IN MY LIFE. BUT WHEN THE LORD FINALLY GOT THROUGH TO ME THAT I WAS LIMITING HIM BY MY SMALL THINKING, I WENT OUT AND I BOUGHT A 110,000 SQUARE FOOT uh, BUILDING THAT WAS LOCATED ON EIGHT ACRES. AND THAT WAS A HUGE STEP OF FAITH FOR US. OUR PREVIOUS BUILDING WAS 14,600 SQUARE FEET. SO THIS WAS JUST HUGE COMPARED TO WHAT I HAD. AND THE ELECTRIC OR THE UTILITY PAYMENTS ON THAT 110,000 SQUARE FOOT BUILDING WAS MORE THAN OUR ENTIRE PAYMENTS ON THE PREVIOUS BUILDING. I MEAN, IT WAS JUST A HUGE LEAP OF FAITH AND I TOOK IT, AND SO I BOUGHT THE, I, I BOUGHT THE BUILDING FOR $3.2 MILLION, AND I DIDN'T HAVE THE MONEY, SO I TOOK OUT A LOAN FOR IT. BUT THERE WAS ALSO, IT HAD TO BE REMODELED BECAUSE IT HAD BEEN A, a KIND OF A WAREHOUSE SITUATION, AND IT NEEDED TO BE BUILT OUT, AND IT WAS GOING TO COST $3.2 MILLION TO BUILD IT OUT THE WAY WE NEEDED. AND SO WHEN I GOT THE LOAN FOR THE BUILDING, THE uh, AGENCY THAT GAVE US THE LOAN ALSO SAID THAT THEY WOULD GIVE US A CONSTRUCTION LOAN. AND SO THAT'S THE ONLY REASON WE DID THIS. WE NEEDED A TOTAL OF $6.4 MILLION. AND SO AFTER WE BOUGHT THE BUILDING, WE COULDN'T USE IT UNTIL IT WAS REMODELED, AND I STARTED WAITING ON THE CONSTRUCTION LOAN TO COME THROUGH. AND IT TOOK NINE MONTHS. AND NINE MONTHS LATER, I WAS MEETING WITH THE BANKERS AND THE BANKERS JUST SAID, YOU KNOW, IT'S BEEN A YEAR NOW SINCE WE'VE HAD AN APPRAISAL ON THIS BUILDING. LET'S JUST START THE WHOLE PROCESS OVER. AND BOY, WHEN THEY SAID THAT, IT JUST DID NOT SIT WELL WITH ME. WE WERE IN A BIND. OUR, our FACILITY THAT WE WERE USING FOR THE BIBLE COLLEGE, IF YOU PUT A HUNDRED PEOPLE IN OUR MAIN ROOM, IT WAS JUST CROWDED. WE HAD TO HAVE SPACE. IT WAS GOING TO KILL THE BIBLE COLLEGE IF WE DIDN'T DO SOMETHING. SO I JUST WAS UNWILLING TO SIT THERE FOR ANOTHER NINE MONTHS AND WAIT ON THEM TO GIVE ME A CONSTRUCTION LOAN. SO I TOLD THEM, I SAID, NOPE. I SAID, I'M GOING TO PRAY ABOUT THIS. SOMETHING'S NOT RIGHT. AND I WENT HOME, AND I TOOK THESE VERSES THAT I'M TEACHING YOU ABOUT WHEN YOU PRAY IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE, YOUR SPIRIT PRAYS, AND IT'S THE SPIRIT THAT HAS THE MIND OF CHRIST AND THIS UNCTION FROM THE HOLY ONE, AND YOU KNOW ALL THINGS. AND SO I SAID, FATHER, I KNOW THAT IN MY SPIRIT I HAVE THE MIND OF CHRIST AND THERE IS AN ANSWER TO THIS PROBLEM. I JUST CAN'T FIGURE IT OUT WITH MY BRAIN. I SAID, I'M GOING TO PRAY IN TONGUES AND ASK FOR AN INTERPRETATION. SO I SPENT PROBABLY AN HOUR OR TWO FROM THE TIME I HAD BEEN WITH THE BANKERS UNTIL I GOT HOME. AND WHEN I GOT HOME, I BUILT A TRAIL ON MY PROPERTY. AND BEFORE I EVEN GOT A HUNDRED YARDS DOWN THAT TRAIL, IT WAS ONLY TWO OR THREE MINUTES INTO MY WALK. I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES AND ASKING GOD FOR AN INTERPRETATION, AND BOOM, JUST LIKE THIS, A PROPHECY THAT HAD BEEN GIVEN ME TWO YEARS BEFORE CAME TO MY REMEMBRANCE. YOU KNOW, THIS IS ANOTHER THING IT SAYS IN JOHN 14, 26, THAT THE COMFORTER, WHICH IS THE HOLY GHOST, WHOM THE FATHER WILL SEND IN MY NAME, HE WILL TEACH YOU ALL THINGS AND BRING ALL THINGS TO YOUR REMEMBRANCE WHATSOEVER I HAVE SPOKEN UNTO YOU. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, IT CAME BACK TO MY MEMORY, THIS PROPHECY. AND IN THIS PROPHECY, THE LORD TOLD ME, HE SAYS, YOU AREN'T GOING TO NEED TO TAKE OUT A LOAN TO GET ALL OF THIS BUILDING DONE BECAUSE YOU OWN A BANK. AND WHEN THE PERSON WHO SAID THAT SAID THIS ABOUT OWNING A BANK, I THOUGHT, WHAT BANK DO I OWN? AND HE SAID, YOUR PARTNERS ARE YOUR BANK. 
and they will supply all. You can't build enough that your partners can't supply it. And did you know at the time that that prophecy was given, that was just so far out there from where I was that I just, I don't know, I didn't fully appreciate it. I didn't fully appropriate it. But when I was praying and asking God for an interpretation, immediately that prophecy came back to me. I hadn't thought about it in two years. And all of a sudden I thought, God, is that the answer? Is this the interpretation to what I'm praying that I don't even need a loan? At the time, you know, I went back to my house and at the rate we had been able to save money, we had about $30,000 in saving that it had taken us years to come up with that much money. And I figured that for us to come up with $3.2 million above our normal expenses to get this building done without taking out a loan, I sat down and figured out I'd have been over 120 years old. And so if I chose to go that route, you know, I wasn't going to start that way and say, God told me to do this, and then if it doesn't work out, do something else. No, the Scripture says, I believe it's Psalms chapter 15, verse 4, that a godly man will swear to his own hurt and change not. If, if I really believed that that was God telling me not to take out a loan, and if I committed to doing that, I wasn't going to change. I don't care if they came up and offered me the money. So it was a, it was a big deal, and it could have killed the ministry if this wasn't God. So I prayed about it for about a week. And the more I prayed about it, man, the stronger the desire got that I just felt like that was God telling me that I don't need to take out a loan. So I finally went into my uh, business manager of our ministry and I said, God spoken to me. I said, I'm not going to take out a loan. I don't care if they offer me the $3.2 million that I need. Tomorrow, I'm not taking out a loan. I'm going to do it debt free. And man, this just put the ministry in a bind. If it wasn't God, it could have destroyed us. Did you know the very next day, the bank came back and says, we've decided we've approved you for $4 million. You need more than 3.2 and you're now approved for $4 million. And did you know, I told them, I said, you're too late. I said, I'm not taking out a loan. I'm going to do this debt free. And there was a lot of people thought it would never happen. But did you know, in 14 months, we had that building completely renovated and moved in and we're using it. And that started something that now we have over $130 million worth of assets debt free because of what God spoke to me. And you know how all that happened? Praying in tongues and asking God for an interpretation. I tell you that's powerful. And that's not an isolated instance. I have done this literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. When it, I'm just up against a decision and it seems like, God, I, it, nothing that I can see looks like it's a good alternative. And I say, God, there's got to be an answer. I know I'm doing what you called me to do. There's got to be a way through this situation. And I'll just go to praying in tongues and drawing out this wisdom of God that's on the inside and say, God, what am I speaking? Show me, give me revelation and help my understanding to become fruitful. And I have done that and there has literally been hundreds of times that I have made decisions that in the natural, they didn't look smart, but over a period of time, when you look back, it was the supernatural wisdom of God. And there's times that I've ignored that wisdom too and I've reaped the results of my own thinking. There's times that I've let other people influence me and I knew in my heart that God was leading me in one direction, but other people influenced me and it made sense. And I just went, leaned unto my own understanding. I haven't done all of this perfectly, but I am saying that there are hundreds of times that I have been faced with situations and I just pray in tongues and believe God for an interpretation and it works. Let me also add a little bit to this, that when, you, when you're praying in tongues by yourself and you're asking God for an interpretation, it's your spirit praying and it's just your understanding that needs to become fruitful. You don't have to stop and speak with your mouth and interpret it like in a church service where somebody speaks in tongues and then here's an interpretation that comes forth. You could keep praying in tongues and just have your understanding quickened. 
YOU KNOW, WAY BACK IN THE BEGINNING, WHEN I FIRST RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND STARTED SPEAKING IN TONGUES, I STRUGGLED uh, WITH REALLY BELIEVING THAT THIS WAS GOD BECAUSE I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND WHAT I WAS SAYING, AND I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND THE THINGS THAT I'M SAYING RIGHT HERE. BUT I JUST KNEW I NEEDED THIS. I SAW THE BENEFIT OF IT IN SCRIPTURE, AND SO I FORCED MYSELF TO PRAY IN TONGUES. AND THE WHOLE TIME I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES, YOU GOT TO DO SOMETHING WITH YOUR MIND BECAUSE THE BIBLE SAYS HERE IN 1 CORINTHIANS 14, 14, WHEN YOU'RE PRAYING IN TONGUES, YOUR SPIRIT'S PRAYING, NOT YOUR BRAIN. YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE WAYS I COULD TELL THAT THIS WAS TRULY MY SPIRIT PRAYING IS BECAUSE I COULD PRAY IN TONGUES AND READ SCRIPTURE AND HAVE TOTAL uh, RECALL OF WHAT I WAS READING, AND GOD COULD SPEAK THROUGH ME, AND MY MIND COULD FUNCTION. DID YOU KNOW YOU CAN'T DO THAT uh, IF YOU'RE PRAYING IN TONGUES AND TRYING TO RECITE A POEM LIKE MARY HAD A LITTLE LAMB. IF YOU ARE PRAYING IN TONGUES WITH YOUR BRAIN, IF IT WAS JUST YOUR MIND THAT WAS DOING IT, YOU CAN'T DO TWO THINGS LIKE THAT. BUT IF YOU'RE PRAYING IN TONGUES, THEN YOUR MIND CAN BE OCCUPIED WITH PRAYING IN ENGLISH. AND SO THIS IS WHAT I WOULD DO. BEFORE I UNDERSTOOD ALL THE THINGS I'M TELLING YOU, I JUST KNEW I NEEDED TO START uh, SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND I WAS STRUGGLING TO DO IT, SO I WOULD DISCIPLINE MYSELF, AND I WOULD PRAY IN TONGUES FOR AN HOUR OR TWO A DAY. AND I'D JUST PRAY IN TONGUES. AND I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND THAT I COULD ASK FOR AN INTERPRETATION, SO I HAD TO DO SOMETHING WITH MY MIND, BECAUSE IT WASN'T MY MIND PRAYING, IT WAS MY SPIRIT PRAYING. SO AS I PRAYED IN TONGUES, I WOULD JUST BE PRAYING WITH MY MIND ALSO. AND SO I WOULD PRAY FOR DIFFERENT PEOPLE, AND I STARTED SEEING A PATTERN THAT I WOULD, I'D BE PRAYING IN TONGUES FOR AN HOUR OR SOMETHING AT A TIME, AND AS I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES, I WAS PRAYING WITH MY MIND, AND I, I WOULD START PRAYING, AND PEOPLE WOULD COME TO MY REMEMBRANCE THAT I HADN'T THOUGHT OF IN YEARS. AND I MEAN, IT WAS JUST TOTALLY OUT OF THE BLUE. IT WAS SOMETHING THAT I WOULDN'T HAVE THOUGHT OF, AND THINGS WOULD JUST START COMING TO MY MIND, THINGS THAT GOD HAD TOLD ME, OR THINGS uh, THAT HE TOLD ME TO DO, OR PEOPLE THAT I HADN'T SEEN IN YEARS. AND I REMEMBER ONE DAY THAT I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES FOR PROBABLY TWO HOURS, AND WHILE I WAS PRAYING, THERE WAS a, a GUY THAT I HAD KNOWN WHEN I WAS A BAPTIST. This, IT HAD BEEN LIKE FOUR YEARS SINCE I'D SEEN THIS GUY. WE USED TO BE FRIENDS. WE WENT TO SCHOOL TOGETHER, AND I JUST LOST CONTACT OF HIM. AND AS I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES, HE JUST KEPT COMING BACK TO MY REMEMBRANCE AND COMING BACK TO MY REMEMBRANCE, AND I WAS PRAYING FOR HIM WITH MY UNDERSTANDING WHILE I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES. AND AS I WAS PRAYING, THE DOORBELL RANG, AND I WENT TO THE DOOR, AND IT WAS THIS GUY. I HADN'T SEEN HIM OR THOUGHT OF HIM IN FOUR YEARS, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, BOOM, HERE HE IS. AND SO I INVITED HIM IN, AND HE JUST CAME IN, AND HE STARTED CRYING, AND HE WAS IN A TERRIBLE SITUATION, AND HE WAS ASKING ME FOR HELP, AND RIGHT IN THE MIDDLE OF IT, I JUST STOPPED HIM, AND I SAID, HERE'S WHAT THE PROBLEM IS, AND I STARTED READING HIS MAIL, I SAID THANKS TO HIM THAT IT WAS IMPOSSIBLE TO KNOW. AND YOU GOT TO REMEMBER THAT IT HAD BEEN FOUR YEARS SINCE I'D SEEN HIM. I WAS A BAPTIST BACK WHEN I KNEW HIM BEFORE, AND I HAD SINCE THEN RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY GHOST, SPEAKING IN TONGUES, AND I WAS OPERATING IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. THIS WAS ALL NEW TO HIM, AND IT SCARED HIM, BUT EVERYTHING I WAS SAYING WAS ABSOLUTELY TRUE, AND IT JUST OPENED HIM UP. HE KNEW THAT THIS WAS GOD SPEAKING THROUGH ME TO HIM, AND IT JUST SET HIM FREE. AND I MEAN, I WAS ABLE TO JUST, I MEAN, QUICKLY. I EVEN STOPPED HIM AND TOLD HIM WHAT HIS PROBLEM WAS. I, BEFORE HE TOLD ME, I TOLD HIM THESE THINGS. YOU KNOW HOW THAT WORKED? BECAUSE I HAD BEEN PRAYING IN TONGUES. MY SPIRIT MAN WASN'T LIMITED IN THE WAY THAT MY PHYSICAL MAN IS. AND I HAD BEEN PRAYING FOR THIS GUY FOR OVER AN HOUR WHEN HE SHOWED UP. AND THAT'S THE REASON THAT IT WAS ABLE TO WORK. AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS WHY WHEN I MEET PEOPLE AND THEY ASK ME TO PRAY FOR THEM, ALL OF A SUDDEN I JUST KNOW THINGS. GOD SHOWS ME THAT HERE'S THE PROBLEM. MAN, I COULD GIVE YOU HUNDREDS, HUNDREDS OF EXAMPLES OF PEOPLE COMING TO ME AND SAYING, HERE'S THE PROBLEM, AND THE LORD SPEAKS TO ME AND HE SAYS, NO, THAT'S NOT THE PROBLEM. THIS IS THE PROBLEM. AND I'M ABLE TO JUST CUT THROUGH THE CHASE. I DON'T KNOW HOW YOU CAN PRAY FOR PEOPLE OR COUNSEL PEOPLE WITHOUT THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. BECAUSE IF PEOPLE REALLY UNDERSTOOD WHAT THE PROBLEM WAS, THEY COULD FIX IT. MOST OF THE TIME, PEOPLE THINK THIS OTHER PERSON IS THEIR PROBLEM WHEN THE PROBLEM IS PROBABLY INSIDE OF THEM, THE WAY THEY'RE RESPONDING TO THIS OTHER PERSON. AND THEY DON'T SEE IT. AND IT NEEDS SOMEBODY TO HAVE 
this ability to be, to flow in the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit reveal things to you. How do these gifts of the Holy Spirit operate? Well, there's multiple things, but to me, one of the biggest things is praying in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, it is your spirit that is praying and it's just your understanding. All you need to do is just get a word and understanding. God will give you a picture. The Lord has given me people's names before. You know, I had, back when this first started operating in me, again, I didn't fully understand what happened. And one of the ways that I learned was that I was just spending an hour or two praying in tongues. And this man that used to be a youth director in our Baptist church, he kept coming to my mind. And I'd heard things that he had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that he had seen people come out of wheelchairs, blind eyes open. I'd heard a story about him, but I hadn't had contact with him in 10 years. And every time I would pray, I mean, for a month, he just kept coming back to my remembrance. And instead of praying for him and acting on it and doing something, I just would think, I wonder what's happening with, his name was Bob Lewis. And I said, I wonder what's happening with Bob Lewis. And I just dismissed him. And then I heard that he had gone out to get in his car. I think he lived in El Paso, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. And when he put his hand on the doorknob, a red ant bit his thumb and he had an allergic reaction and just died. And when I heard that, I thought, that's the reason he kept coming to my remembrance for a month. I was supposed to pray for him. And did you know it was probably another 10 years after that that I was holding a meeting someplace and a guy came up and said his name was Bob Lewis. And I said, man, I, I knew a Bob Lewis that was a youth director in my Baptist church. He says, that was my dad. And anyway, I'm running out of time, but the long and the short of it was I apologized to him and said, God was putting your father on my heart to pray for him and I didn't know what to do with it. And he said, you're at least the 12th person who has told me that. He says, God was trying to raise up people to intercede. And I recognized right then that, man, this isn't coincidence. When I'm praying in tongues and all of a sudden these things start coming to my mind, that's the Holy Spirit inspiring me. You know, I hadn't got time to go into this, but you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, and you can do it incorrectly. You can do it out of the flesh. Now, it's your spirit that prays, but it, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it talks about that people were coming together for the Lord's Supper and that they were actually getting drunk. And some people had a lot of food and they would bring their food and they would have a feast while other people were poor and wouldn't have very much. And Paul rebuked them for this whole thing. And so is the Lord's Supper something that we're supposed to do away with because it was done carnally and it was done incorrectly? Certainly not. Likewise, speaking in tongues can be done in a religious way to where it's uh, just promoting yourself instead of uh, from a pure heart. And this is what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about. In verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is God's kind of love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, you're just making noise. I agree with that. There are people who have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues who aren't spiritual at all. They aren't godly at all. And uh, it can be used wrong, just as the Lord's Supper can. In this same um, book to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it talks about uh, setting aside your offerings so that they could be collected every Sabbath day or every Lord's Day. And so uh, this was a carnal church. They were doing some things wrong and Paul rebuked them, especially in 2 Corinthians. He talked about the motives behind your giving and things like this. But just because giving can be used wrong because people can give it carnally, does that mean that we're supposed to quit giving, that we're supposed to rece quit receiving offerings and tithes? I don't think anybody would agree with that. This isn't saying that love is better than the gifts. It's saying that the gifts operating by love are better than the gifts operating without love and doing it in a way that is to, for debate or to show that you're more spiritual than someone else. He goes on to say in verse 2, he says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Again, is this saying that we should do away with faith, that love is better? No. Uh, it says at the very end of this chapter, it says, Now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. 
SO HE SAYS FAITH STILL ABIDES. THIS ISN'T SAYING THAT WE SHOULD DO AWAY WITH FAITH. IT'S JUST SAYING THAT FAITH HAS TO BE OPERATED IN LOVE. FIRST, uh, GALATIANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 6 SAYS, uh, CIRCUMCISION PROFITS NOTHING, NOR UNCIRCUMCISION, BUT FAITH WHICH WORKS BY LOVE. LOVE HAS TO BE THE MOTIVATION BEHIND EVERYTHING, AND THESE CORINTHIANS HAD GOTTEN TO WHERE THEY WOULD COME TOGETHER AND THEY WOULD ALL SPEAK IN TONGUES AND JUST SIT THERE AND EDIFY THEMSELVES AND NOT THINK ABOUT OTHER PEOPLE. THEY DIDN'T LOVE OTHER PEOPLE. THEY LOVED THEMSELVES. AND THEY WOULD SPEAK IN TONGUES HOPING THAT SOMEBODY WOULD THINK THAT THEY WERE SPIRITUAL AND THEY WERE DOING IT FOR CARNAL REASONS. AND SO PAUL IS REBUKING THEIR MOTIVATION BEHIND IT. JUST BECAUSE YOU HAVE A GIFT OF THE HOLY SPIRIT DOESN'T MEAN IT'S GOING TO BE PURE HOLY SPIRIT. YOU KNOW, THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS. WHEN I PASTORED A CHURCH, I NEVER HAD A MEGA CHURCH, AND SO I CAN UNDERSTAND THESE REALLY BIG CHURCHES, THEY PUT, uh, YOU KNOW, uh, THESE RULES AND PRINCIPLES AND THINGS IN PLACE TO BE ABLE TO MANAGE WHAT HAPPENS. BUT IN MY SMALL CHURCHES, I, en I ENCOURAGED PEOPLE TO OPERATE IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT I TAUGHT ON IT, AND I SPECIFICALLY TOLD THEM I SAID, WHEN YOU STAND UP AND SAY, THUS SAITH THE LORD, AND YOU HAVE A WORD FROM GOD AND YOU GIVE A PROPHECY, I SAID, IT DOESN'T GUARANTEE THAT IT'S GOING TO BE PURE HOLY SPIRIT. I SAID, IT'S JUST LIKE WHEN I PREACH. I BELIEVE THAT GOD HAS GIVEN ME A GIFT TO TEACH THE WORD OF GOD, AND I BELIEVE THAT I'M INSPIRED BY GOD TO SAY WHAT I'M SAYING. BUT AM I SAYING EVERYTHING? IS IT JUST PURE HOLY SPIRIT? THAT I OPEN UP MY MOUTH AND GOD JUST TAKES CONTROL AND EVERYTHING IS 100% PROOF, HOLY SPIRIT? CERTAINLY NOT. YOU KNOW, I HAD A MAN ONE TIME WHO WAS AGAINST WHAT I WAS TEACHING AND HE TOOK AN HOUR AND A HALF TEACHING TAPE AND HE LOOKED UP EVERY VERSE THAT I QUOTED. I PROBABLY QUOTED OVER A HUNDRED VERSES. AND TOWARDS THE END OF THE THING, I QUOTED SOMETHING AND I MISQUOTED ONE WORD IN A VERSE AND HE TOLD THE PERSON WHO BROUGHT HIM THAT TAPE, HE SAYS, SEE, I TOLD YOU, HE'S OF THE DEVIL BECAUSE HE TWISTED THE WORD OF GOD BECAUSE I MISSED ONE WORD OUT OF A HUNDRED IN, uh, YOU KNOW, QUOTING ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND IF A PERSON IS THINKING THAT uh, UNLESS YOU ARE PURE HOLY SPIRIT, THAT THERE IS NONE OF YOU IN IT, IT'S JUST ALL HOLY GHOST, IF YOU THINK THAT, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU WILL NEVER FLOW IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. SO I TAUGHT THE PEOPLE IN MY CHURCH. I SAID, LOOK, YOU CAN BE INSPIRED OF GOD, BUT IT'S JUST LIKE A MINISTER. I CAN BE SAYING, WHAT I'M SAYING IS FROM GOD, BUT MAYBE NOT EVERY WORD IS DIRECTLY FROM GOD. GOD DOESN'T SPEAK TEXAN THE WAY I DO. HE DOESN'T SAY Y'ALL. AND JUST BECAUSE I SAY Y'ALL INSTEAD OF YOU ALL, DOES THAT MEAN THAT IT WASN'T GOD? OF COURSE, THAT'S RIDICULOUS. NOBODY WOULD BELIEVE THAT. SO, BUT I'M INSPIRED BY GOD, BUT it, THERE MAY BE SOME FLESH IN IT. THERE MAY BE SOME THINGS IN IT. AND I TAUGHT PEOPLE THAT WHEN YOU OPERATE IN THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, IT'S NOT JUST PURE HOLY SPIRIT. AND SO I SAID, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS HERE IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14 THAT WHEN A PERSON PROPHESIES THAT YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO SIT AND THE OTHERS ARE SUPPOSED TO JUDGE. AND SO I, I GAVE PEOPLE FREEDOM TO GET UP AND SPEAK. AND MANY TIMES THEY WOULD SPEAK AND THEY WOULD START OUT AND IT WOULD BE REALLY GOOD AND THEN THEY'D GET EXCITED AND THEY'D ADD A LITTLE BIT TO IT. AND THERE'S TIMES THAT I WOULD uh, COME IN AFTER THEY HAD GIVEN A PROPHECY AND I SAID, I THINK UP UNTIL THIS POINT THAT YOU WERE RIGHT ON AND THAT THIS WAS THE LORD, BUT THEN YOU ADDED A LITTLE BIT TO IT. I SAID, YOU JUST SHOULD HAVE STOPPED RIGHT THERE AND have JUST SPOKEN WHAT GOD SPOKE. AND PEOPLE DIDN'T TAKE IT AS CRITICISM. THEY TOOK IT AS, YOU KNOW, JUST A, a, a WAY OF HELPING THEM UNDERSTAND. AND BECAUSE OF IT, WE HAD THE GIFTS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT FLOWING AND GOOD THINGS WERE HAPPENING. SO ANYWAY, I SAY ALL OF THAT TO SAY THAT THESE VERSES RIGHT HERE ARE SAYING THAT YOU CAN OPERATE IN FAITH AND DO IT OUT OF uh, STRIFE OR BITTERNESS OR JUST TRYING TO SHOW HOW STRONG YOU ARE. AND IF YOU AREN'T MOTIVATED BY LOVE, IT PROFITS YOU NOTHING. AND THEN HE GOES ON AND SAYS THIS. I'M GOING TO SKIP DOWN A FEW VERSES. IT TALKS ABOUT SOME OF THE CHARACTERISTICS OF GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. AND THEN IT SAYS IN VERSE 8, IT SAYS, CHARITY, GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, NEVER FAILETH. BUT WHETHER THERE BE PROPHECIES, THEY SHALL FAIL. WHETHER THERE BE TONGUES, THEY SHALL CEASE. WHETHER THERE BE KNOWLEDGE, IT SHALL VANISH AWAY. AND LIKE I SAID, I'VE HEARD MUCH OPPOSITION AGAINST SPEAKING IN TONGUES. AND THE ONLY uh, SCRIPTURAL CRITICISM OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES THAT I FELT EVER HAD ANY TRACTION TO IT IS RIGHT HERE. BECAUSE THIS DOES SAY THAT SPEAKING IN TONGUES WILL CEASE. AND SO PEOPLE SAY, WELL, SEE, THAT TIME IS OVER, AND THIS WAS ONLY DURING THE FIRST CENTURY, AND NOWADAYS 
this gift of speaking in tongues doesn't work. And yet, if you look at it in context, it's saying just the opposite. So go back again. It says, Prophecies shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And people teach that that which is perfect is the Bible. And now that we have the Bible, then all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, these miracles of healings and all of the things that are so, um, you know, front and center prominent in the Word of God, that doesn't work today because now we have that which is perfect, which is the Bible. Well, I do believe that the Bible is perfect, but I don't believe that that's the perfect that this is talking about because continue to read. It says right here in verse 11, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then, then when? That when that which is perfect is come. Verse 10. All of this is in context. Then, when that which is perfect is come, it says, um, we'll see face to face. We haven't seen face to face yet. This is talking about when we either the Lord returns and we are caught up with Him in the clouds or when we go to be with the Lord at the end of the times. When we are face to face with the Lord, then that, that which is perfect has come. I don't believe this is talking about the Bible, even though I believe the Bible is perfect. I believe it's talking about our glorified body and we will be renewed. It goes on to say um, in verse 12, it says, Now we see through a glass darkly, but then, when that which is perfect is come face to face, now I know in part, but then, when that which is perfect is come, shall I know even as also I am known. So we haven't seen face to face yet. That's talking about either the return of the Lord or our gathering together unto Him. And then it says that I will know all things, even as also I am known. As a matter of fact, again, I won't go into the effort to try and prove this, but I'll just mention it. You can go search it out. But over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul was saying he didn't use enticing words of man's wisdom. He didn't come in just excellency of speech but he depended upon the Holy Spirit to make it clear to people. And he says, but we still speak wisdom. It's just not the wisdom of the world because if the world had had any wisdom, they'd have never crucified Jesus. But he says, we are speaking the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. Where did this hidden wisdom come from? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Paul said he was speaking wisdom, the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And it says when you speak in tongues, the same man in the same book writing said that when he speaks in tongues, he's speaking the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. I believe that the way Paul got his revelation, a revelation of the gospel that even made it uh, the people who spent three and a half years with Jesus as his disciples, Peter, James, John, those people. Peter said over in 2 Peter chapter 3, our beloved brother Paul says some things that are hard to be understood, which those who are unlearned and unstable wrestle as they do other scriptures. Peter called Paul's writing scripture, and yet he says it's hard to understand. It was a revelation of grace that went even beyond what Peter knew. And he spent three and a half years under the physical uh, body ministry of Jesus. Where did Paul get this wisdom from? He says, when you pray in tongues, you're praying the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And he says, the things I'm preaching is the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. I believe when Paul went into the desert for three and a half years, you can read about this over in Galatians chapter 1. And when he was there for three and a half years, Paul had studied under Gamaliel and part of the Jewish um, teachings to people who were going to be rabbis were that they had to memorize the first five books of the Bible, the, the books that Moses wrote. So he knew the Word of God. Plus, he knew the Psalms. He knew the prophets. He had studied. He had the Word in him, but he was looking at it through a lens 
OF LEGALISM AND JUDAISM THAT MADE THE WORD OF GOD OF NONE EFFECT IS WHAT JESUS SAID. YOUR TRADITIONS AND DOCTRINES OF MEN MAKE THE WORD OF GOD OF NONE EFFECT, MARK CHAPTER 7, VERSE 13. BUT WHEN HE HAD HIS CONVERSION EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD, HE WENT INTO THE DESERT AND HE HAD TO GET ALL OF HIS TEACHING AND UNDERSTANDING OF THE WORD REALIGNED AND ONE OF THE WAYS, I DON'T THINK IT'S THE ONLY WAY, BUT ONE OF THE WAYS THAT THAT HAPPENED WAS HE PRAYED IN TONGUES AND SPOKE FORTH THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD AND ASKED GOD TO HELP HIM TO UNDERSTAND SCRIPTURE. AND AS A RESULT, HIS REVELATION OF THE WORD OF GOD SUPERSEDED THE REVELATION OF THE PEOPLE WHO SPENT THREE AND A HALF YEARS WITH JESUS IN HIS PHYSICAL BODY DAY AND NIGHT FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS. THAT'S THE POWER OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES. YOU CAN HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT REVEAL THINGS TO YOU. you WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU'RE PRAYING THIS HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD AND THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL REVEAL IT TO YOU AND SHOW YOU THINGS TO COME AND REVEAL THE TRUE INTENT OF THE WORD OF GOD. AND YOU CAN INTERPRET THAT TONGUE AND GOD WILL JUST GIVE YOU WISDOM THAT IS BEYOND YOURSELF. AND THIS IS POWERFUL TO ME. I DEPEND UPON THIS. I DRAW ON THIS CONSTANTLY.